Hello everyone and welcome back to this Nano Photonics and Plasmonics course. Now that we have introduced the concept of photonic waveguides uh, and so how um, plasmons can actually provide some alternative to, uh, to waveguiding, uh, we're going to dive into some uh, particular applications of uh, plasmonic waveguides. So the first uh, example is, uh, is a VGOOF uh, plasmonic waveguide. So this is basically uh, done in a, uh, on a metallic film and uh, we can etch away uh, a very long uh, groove and it's called V-groove because of the, the actual shape. Uh, this is a cross section uh, and it's basically uh, confining the electromagnetic field of the surface plasmon polaritons of this uh, metallic surface inside the, the groove. So now what can be done is basically placing a quantum emitter uh, inside the groove and this quantum emitter will couple to the, the SPPs of propagate along the, the edge of the groove. Now, when it's basically reaching the end of the groove, it's going to outcouple and ray emit light. So in this particular example, uh, they have done that with uh, a diamond uh, NV defect. Uh, and basically what they observe is uh, when placing the quantum emitter uh, at the center, they observe emission of light uh, on both ends of the V groove, depending on the, the polarization uh, of the optical excitation and the polarization of the, the detection. Those V-grooves uh, can be engineered and designed uh, in very specific ways. Uh, so we can uh, generate white splitters and Max Zender interferometers uh, with those V-grooves. So these are um, micrograph uh, imagings uh, and these are near field imagings uh, when basically you, 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 you excite uh, a quantum emitter in the channel and you can see the propagation of light along the different arms of the white splitter or along the, the the Max Zender uh, interferometer. So those V-grooves uh, sustain SPPs and those uh, basically structures uh, have very low loss so that allows the propagation of the electromagnetic signal and therefore the, the SPPs over distances of the order of 100 uh, micrometers. Uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, because of the specific uh, design of those, uh, those grooves, uh, the SPPs are actually well confined inside the channel. Uh, as you can see from these, uh, these images, uh, they can be used with a uh, very large uh, angle bending and splitting uh, all the radiations and the, the, there's very minimal loss. Um, another type of plasmonic waveguide uh, is just a plasmonic stripe. Uh, the plasmons that are uh, propagating along these stripes uh, are very damped typically. Uh, so because of the, uh, the, the symmetries, uh, then you're going to have a symmetric mode where both sides uh, I'm going to be in phase, uh, so you're going to have positive and negative charges on both sides. Or Now you can also have anti-symmetric modes where basically the, the, the upper surface and the lower surface can exhibit uh, anti-symmetric or uh, out-of-phase oscillations. So uh, if you look at the, the symmetric modes, they typically have a fairly short propagation length of the order of a micrometer, uh, while the anti-symmetric is actually uh, showing much longer propagations. Uh, that are uh, tenfold. Um, similarly to the previous experiments, uh, you can actually shine light on one end or having a quantum emitter on this uh, this hand and you're going to basically observe propagation of light and remission of light on the other end of the another wire. Something which is important to notice is that you can actually uh, increase the propagation length of these, uh, of these nanowires wires by just increasing the width uh, of the stripe. Uh, so by doing so you can increase drastically uh, from 10 microns in length all the way to maybe 60. Uh, but at some point you see that you start uh, saturating and uh, you cannot fur uh, further increase due to the, to the inherent loss of, of the metal. If you use the same concept of nanowires but now you can actually look at cylindrical nanowires uh, you can do the same. So this, uh, this work has been uh, done in 2007 so it's one, one of the first work uh, showing propagation uh, along a nanowire uh, from a quantum emitter. Uh, this is a, an actual optical measurement where you have the, the quantum dot uh, shining light bright uh, at the center here and then you can see emission of light on both ends of the silver nanowire. So uh, you have a direct coupling of the emission from the quantum dot uh, to, the, uh, to the nanowire. Uh, so I encourage you to, to go back uh, to chapter 9 on LSP uh, and uh, quantum emitter coupling. If you look at the uh, cylindrical nanowire, uh, you can also very similarly to the 
to the previous uh, case of the V groove, you can also design white splitters and Max Zender interferometers. So this is an example of a white splitter uh, where basically uh, you can shine light optical excitation uh, at one end of the of the structure. Uh, if you have a polarization, which is basically a line uh, along this direction, then basically you can propagate SPPs uh, along this uh, this arm and also along the, the, the other output. So basically you are illuminating uh, both outputs here. Now, if you basically uh, have a polarization, which is along the main axis of this uh, main nano wire, then basically light will not propagate along the, the second channel, but will only go through this uh, this output number three here. So you're going to have only one uh, one end of the, the white splitter illuminating. So you can really turn on and off the different um, the different uh, output ports of this white uh, splitter, depending on the incoming polarization. You see the fabricated nanostructure. And what they have done here is basically the, the reverse of what is done here. So basically, they, they send light uh, to lasers on both uh, both ends of the, the Y splitter uh, and then depending on the phase of the, the incoming light on both you can have either uh, constructive interference and therefore have a uh, wave propagating along the, the, the main uh, the main arm of the Y splitter or basically have uh, out of phase uh, signal and basically you can have destructive interference and light will not go all the way to the to the to the end so you can have, you have basically no signal coming from the Y splitter uh, major arm um, another example of uh, plasmonic uh, waveguides is basically um, the nanoparticle chain or cluster network. So this one works a little bit differently than the previous examples where you had basically SPPs propagating. In this uh, particular example, uh, they used uh, individual nanoparticles that are placed on this uh, benzene type of uh, configuration. So it's this, uh, uh, basically oligomers. Uh, and that basically are forming this network uh, of, uh, of clusters. Now, if you take e an individual cluster, and if you look at the, the charge distribution and used by the surface plasmon resonance, so in fact, you have localized surface plasmon resonances, and you see that you have dipole resonances, you have positive and negative charge on each of the individual nanoparticles. Uh, and if you look at the orientation of the induced dipole moment, which are induced by, uh, represented by these black arrows, you see that they basically they form this closed loop. So because now you have these dipole moments that are aligned uh, in a and forming a closed loop, so you're gonna have a circulating current. And as a resulting of the circulating current, uh, then you're gonna induce a, a net a magnetic dipole moment and therefore a magnetic field. And in that particular case, you're actually propagating the magnetic field from one unit to another. So uh, with this, um, they have been able to actually measure the time average uh, energy flow uh, through those chains of, of nanoparticles. And they can actually fit uh, the frontal data to extract the, the decay length of, the, of these magnetic fields that are propagating along the, uh, the network of nanoparticles. So these are magnetic plasma resonances. They operate at 1500 nanometers wavelength um, but they, they propagate uh, over distances of uh, of the order of two microns. So uh, we are far from the 100 micrometers uh, from the, the V-groove, but uh, we are looking at very small structures that are maybe 100 nanometers in, uh, in size. Similarly to the previous examples, uh, they can actually generate y splitters or even Max Zender interferometers with those structures. Uh, and the, basically the same concept. So the uh, the magnetic fields uh, from the plasmon is actually propagating along both arms in a certain way. Uh, in that particular case of Max Zender uh, and uh, White Splitter, uh, they have been able to, to reach uh, almost four microns in terms of propagation length. So you can actually play around with those, uh, those guys, uh, similarly to what you would do uh, with the, the White Splitters and everything from the V-Groove. Uh, you can change the, 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 the length of the arms uh, with respect to each other. So if you have two sources, so two magnetic sources, uh, dipole uh, that are uh, exciting each arm, if both arms are the same, uh, they're going to be in phase. Uh, and therefore, at the end, at the very end of the, the white splitter, you're going to have constructive interference. If you change by one unit uh, the length of one of this arm, 
you're gonna basically generate out of phase uh, signals uh, that are gonna be overlapping when reaching the intersection, therefore you're gonna have destructive interference at the end, uh, similar with the, the Max Zender interferometer. So uh, those magnetic plasmons uh, basically uh, are uh, very good for wave guiding uh, because they, they exhibit very uh, uh, very low loss uh, that allows to basically go with large uh, angled bands, uh, very similarly to uh, to photonic crystals. Uh, they can split at intersections. Uh, you can also have this uh, Max Zander interference uh, between consecutive wave splitters and do some some uh, some logic out of that. Um, so those plasmonic clusters, uh, they are basically building blocks uh, and basic elements for low-loss waveguides. Um, so the advantage is that they allow you to uh, overcome the challenge in terms of miniaturization uh, and in terms of uh, reaching high-density integration for uh, optical circuitry. If you want uh, basically to reach this trade-off between confinement and loss, then you need to really choose the geometry uh, appropriately uh, and of course that's going to be depending dependent on okay what length scale you're trying to achieve and what uh, energy is actually being transported uh, so this is basically uh, described by the figure of merit you're trying to uh, to achieve through the the, the mod area and the, the propagation length. so if you're looking at thin slabs for instance then you can reach very high propagation length of the order of centimeter uh, scale but on the other end, you have very poor uh, perpendicular confinement, so the field is going to be spinning out uh, via the, the evanescent wave uh, within the dielectric. So the transverse uh, confinement of the field is very poor. So you have strong, uh, long propagation, uh, very good LP, but you have a very poor confinement, so very uh, very large uh, A2. On the other end, if you look at methane nanowires and those the nanoparticle chains, so you have very uh, good confinement of the fields, so they are confined, uh, so basically you're gonna uh, optimize this A2 coefficient, but on the other end, the, the propagation remains on the micron scales. An alternative to those uh, plasmonic and uh, photonic waveguides is actually uh, hybrid waveguides. So you have a metallic film uh, and a dielectric, uh, dielectric nanowire, which is just spaced by uh, a piece of glass, so you can control the distance between this dielectric uh, nanowire and metallic slab. If you have uh, the nanowire only, uh, then basically you're gonna focus all the electromagnetic radiations within the, the dielectric nanowire. When you bring this nanowire close to a metallic surface, uh, then you're, you're gonna be able to confine the electromagnetic field uh, within the gap region. And if you bring very close, you can really confine uh, very efficiently the field in a very small region. So the, you're gonna maximize the, the, the mode volume or the mode area. Uh, and on the other end, because of the presence of this dielectric nanowire, then you're going to be able to achieve very large uh, distances of the order of 40 to 150 micrometers. And the mode confinement is basically uh, of the order of lambda square over uh, 400 to lambda square over 40. So very good confinement, very uh, large distances. So um, to conclude, uh, we've discussed the, the, uh, the different type of uh, photonic waveguides, uh, discussing dielectric optical waveguides and the optical fiber. Uh, we discussed about the limitations of, uh, of those waveguides uh, and in terms of photonic crystals. And we discussed about uh, various types of plasmonic waveguides, such as uh, two-dimensional planar waveguides with different configurations. And we discussed about the, the V-grooves uh, as, uh, as a way to propagate light. Uh, and they discussed uh, different type of nanowire waveguides, so the stripe and uh, the cylindrical nanowire. Uh, and then finally, we, we discussed about uh, using nanoscale uh, objects to, to design plasmonic chains and uh, nanoparticle networks uh, as, a, as, a, as a way to propagate uh, propagate electromagnetic signal. And we briefly introduced the concept of hybrid waveguides that basically uh, make use of the, uh, both the dielectric component and the metallic uh, plasmonic elements.